I'm going to just start saying good morning, Dawn. Right. <laughs> How are you hey, this Liz. morning? I'm good. I'm good. 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 Happy, happy 10 days till Christmas. Wow. I know. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's happening. It's 65 degrees outside. It's amazing. I know. We have to get used to so many different things between COVID mm. and the weather. And for some of us, you know, our kids are getting grown in a way and trying to make decisions about holidays and how we do so, how we finish the end of the year. There's just so many things that mm -hmm. are different as we yeah. get older and how graceful will you be as you enter into these phases? It's always a good question. I know That's that right. I'm, not, I'm not always as graceful as I want to be, I have to admit, but that's not what we're here to talk about today and great resignation. Welcome back. You guys, I don't know how many weeks we've been doing this, but it's been a lot of weeks. And um, you can find all of our videos over on our uh, Shimula YouTube channel. So subscribe, join, comment. We'd love to hear from you on the Shimula Share. YouTube channel. Share it. Yes, absolutely. Um, today, you know, we've only got about 15 minutes today because, uh, Liz, do you have the link we can put over uh, we can put on our, our Facebook page. We at yeah. 30, we're doing another mind mapping event. We have a lot of people calling for mind mapping events. So we're, we've been doing some kind of high level mind lap, my, mm, mind mapping events. Take two. <laughs> so mind mapping events. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, mind mapping for uh, the holidays so that you have a good holiday, about credit card debt, and about uh, how to come in powerfully uh, if it's about financial goals. So people will have a choice about what kind of mind map that they want to work on. I'm very excited for us to do that. But that means Liz and I have to jump off at 11.15. So. That is correct. Know, so, so you want me just to add it on the Facebook comments below? Okay. Yeah, would you do that, please? I will do that. You keep talking for a second because right. um, the multitasking so thing. Yesterday I was posting, I was thinking about the year end and I was thinking about how people end the year end. And in a post that I put up, I was talking about athletes and I'm an athlete. I still, I haven't competed for a couple of years because I had a bad hip, but now I'm back. My intention is to compete in the nationals in April for the YMCA and swimming. And I was reminded that my coach always says, how you do practice is how you do your races. So if you take it easy during practice, you're going to take it easy during a race. And however you use your arm in practice is how you're going to use your arm in a race. How you kick, how you breathe is how you're going to do it in a race. The, the things you tell yourself during practice are the same things you tell yourself during a race. But the one thing that always stuck with me was this notion of finishing hard, finishing okay. strong. And I was thinking about it in the context of how we often end the year, especially for people who are entrepreneurs or small business owners who have taken on this business as a lifestyle where we want to have a lot of freedom and a lot of flexibility. We want to be able to be with our family, be with our friends, do what we want when we want and have the business thrive. But it occurred to me though, that there's also this thing called momentum. <laughs> so if you don't finish, if, if, if you, if you start to like really relax in December, you start to lose momentum and then you have to rebuild that momentum coming into January when the year starts. So do you want to be like on a downturn at the end of the year? Or do you want to be on an upturn at the end of the year and finishing with power and strength? And when I, my boss, no, my uh, coach had said to me one day, he said, I noticed that you're starting to finish softly. You're not like really pushing it at the end. You're not really going into the wall hard. Mm -hmm. at the end. And got me thinking about Michael Phelps when he won the 100 meter butterfly in the 2008 Olympics. Now, in those Olympics, so he won eight gold medals and the 100 meter butterfly was the seventh that he had won. So he had already won six, right? He had already been busting his butt to get six gold medals. And he had two more events. Now, he, how do you finish strong when you're that tired? You're tired, right? You're tired. You've been planning this for four years, but you're still tired. I mean, you, you give every race your all, right? Every, you give every race your all, and then there's another race. 
and you give every ra that race your all. And then there's another race. Oh my God. And then you give that. Every race time you turn around, there's another race. Yeah. Every time you turn around, there's another race. But I wanted to play this video of, um, of Michael Phelps in this seventh one where he won by 0.01 seconds. Wow. Um, it was a very, I mean, you're talking like fingernail touch, right? right. You're talking just barely a fingernail touch. And here's what, and I'm going to, I'm going to do my own narration of it as, as we go. So hang on, let me share my screen. Yeah. And just while she's doing that, I did just put the link below. Sorry, that took me a couple minutes. Um, but if you're free at 1130 today, December 15th, join us for the mind mapping financial chat. Yeah. All right. So I've not done one of these where it also went to, um, where it also went to uh, Facebook book at the same time so let's we're gonna get and you're going to talk versus do the audio right yeah okay yeah. good okay all right can you see this okay yeah all right and i'll see if i can turn the audio off see this is we're still always learning we are always learning audio i just click off. right there yeah there we go okay so here are all the swimmers they're coming in for the big race now, up until this point, they had been practicing, rehearsing for four years. So now they're in the visioning spot. They're envisioning how they're going to do. Are they going to win? They all have their own routine for getting ready. Now, here they are. So right here, they're all now at the starting gate, right? Everybody, it's the first of the year. Everybody has the same chance as everybody else, right? It's a clear playing field. There are no obstacles. Can you see that? There's no obstacles. They've envisioned winning or they wouldn't be in this spot, right? So then they all take off. So, well, in a moment, they're all going to take off. So <laughs> there's our guy, Michael Phelps. He's in lane five. You can watch him against Kavik in lane six. So they all take off. This is a 58 second race. And you can see right here in the middle, okay, he's coming, they're, they're coming in close. That's Kavik. He is in, he is ahead. You can see he is clearly ahead. And if, if you if you know anything about swimming, um, it's not like running. It takes extraordinary effort to be able to collect a body length. So even at the turn, you can see Phelps is not um, in the top three. And you can see here that Kavik is number one. So now, so here's the thing. They're in the race. They've been in the race. This is the race you've been in all year. You have been doing whatever you have done all year. You have been doing whatever marketing you've been doing, any designing you've been doing, any sales calls you've been doing. You have been, it's all of the meetings you went to, it's all the meetings you didn't go to all year long. Imagine that this race is the work that you have done all year long. And at this moment in time, Michael Phelps is behind. Okay. So he's behind. Everything he's trained for, he is behind, all right? So now you're going to see, though, is he starting to make, let's see where the green line is, he's starting to make a comeback. He said, I am not going to lose everything I've worked for. And then he out-touches Kavik at the very last second, all right? He out-touches him at the very last second. And what, I'm, what I want people to re realize here is that he made a decision that he wasn't going to let the other, it's a 100 yard, 100 meter race. He was not going to let the 75 meters be the example of how his race was going to end. Right. He said, I'm pulling from deep down. So I am going to make this happen. I don't know how I'm going to make it happen, but he pulled from somewhere that he was going to make it happen. And he out touched him by a fingernail. I mean, by just the smallest of amounts. But that doesn't matter. He won and he was behind. And I think the question that I have for the people who are observing and we're thinking about how do you want to end your year, right? Whether you, right. Stay, whether, you, whether you stay in the job you're in or whether you move to another job, how do you want to end this year? The way you end this year will say a lot about how you're going to go into your new year, whether you're going into right. a new job or a new position or you start a new company. Right. So I just wanted to kind of have this little bit of a conversation about finishing and, and the power in being aware of how you finish and that it's not always a linear thing 
while it looked linear, you got to remember like uh, arms and legs and breathing and all that was happening at once. There wasn't just a, a push into the wall. It was a lot of things plus some force. Right. So Liz, what are you left with after I talk about all of this? Because I don't well, know. How many you know, with a, with a race, it's a finite amount of time, right? It's a hundred mm -hmm. meters. Right. But that's not what life is. You know, life is more than a hundred meters. So when he got to the end of the race and he did that flip turn or, or pushed off, I, I was surprised they actually didn't all flip turn or whatever. Um, but what happens, I think, is if you coast in and you push off, you do lose momentum and you have to start over, right? Mm -hmm. And the, the vision, it's January is a continuation of everything that you put forth up into this point. And it's okay sometimes to pause, like, because we can't forget the fly, right? Right, we can't forget the fly. We can't forget the fly. And if you don't know what we're talking about, the fly trying to get through the window to get to outside, it keeps pounding against the window. And if it's not working, you do have to pause, right? And revisit, like, what's going on, what's not working, see what is working, and move towards what's working. Mm -hmm. But inside that race, inside the final push, you have to pull from within to finish strong. And then I, from December to January to February to March, it's a continuation of all those practices that you put in all the work. And you don't want to coast and practice, right? right? Because those are all the practice runs for the real life, for the real races. Right. That's a really great way to explain it. I mean, you don't go to the gym and lift weights. I'm just going to do five pounds because I... I should be here. You're, you're always I'm gonna like, practice. doing five pounds. Yeah, I'm going to practice with five pounds. Okay, I did that. No, you go five pounds and then you go 10 pounds and then you go 15 pounds and then you're like, okay, now I'm getting it. Now it's really getting hard, right? But it's because you're committed to your body working in a certain way. Yeah. We, don't always think about our, we don't always think about our jobs or our businesses. And especially if you are thinking about making a big pivot, you don't want to coast at the end because you'll carry that coasting. You wanna, you, you wanna leave a job strong. You don't want a reference to say, well, she was really good until, I don't know, something happened like back in the third quarter and she just wasn't with us all the way. You wanna say, mm -hmm. right, up until the very, right up until the very end, she was reliable. She was count honorable. We could, we knew she would, you know, I, I'm happy to give a great reference because she never quit in doing what she was accountable for. You want to make sure you leave people around you knowing that you're not like going in a downturn somehow. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's, there's like, I remember one time like switching jobs or whatever, and it was like, oh, I just need a break. And then you just break. And then you, you when you go to start your own thing, that break is where you land. And then you got to pick yourself up from, from the break. <laughs> Think so more, it's really good. So that. it's really good if you're thinking about changing jobs, launching a new business or anything like that to really go and do some pre-planning. What does it look like? What does success look like? What are the activities that will get you there? Who's your ideal client? Start talking to people, what you're planning to do. Maybe get a couple people in the pipeline because what happens is there is automatic a slowdown anyway, right? So right. it's really important to have a plan and figure out how you're going to get there. And that way you can start measuring the increases and the revenue and the production because sales cycles, when you start from scratch are longer, right? Because right. people aren't, no, they don't know what you're doing. They, the last time they talked to you, you were doing this, right? So it's a really good time if you're thinking about launching to get some clarity, do some pre-planning. We're here to listen, give you some good questions to help you prepare um, to make that launch. If that's what's really, you know, important to you right now is to make these shifts, take some time to do some pre-planning and we're here Absolutely. to support you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And we're all about vacations. I mean, we're oh, yeah. all about taking a break and taking a vacation, but if it's not planned in, make sure that you kind of keep working toward whatever the objective was. And when you do take a vacation, make sure you do the resting and rejuvenating that you want to do during that time but you need a plan for when you come out of it. That's right. It's part of what Liz is saying. So if you've taken the break, you, you don't want to just say, okay, now I'm now I've taken my vacation. Now what? 
<laughs> you want to you want to leverage the relaxation in because you don't want to be stressed on your first day back because you didn't think about what you have to do. So right, yeah. So it's kind of like allow the vacation to be that pre-swim meditation that gets like yeah Michael prepared for the race. Mm -hmm. It's a great way to say it. That's a great way to say it. So. For those of you who are new here, come on over to um, shimula.com. Give a you know, take our personality quiz. We can help you identify with what your money personality is and your tendency to how you might want to end the year. Some people have everybody has a different way to end the year, and a lot of it's based on your money personality. Mm -hmm. So take the quiz, um, or you can sign up for a, a slot to talk to us about mind mapping or road mapping your life and we'd be happy to chat with you and uh mm -hmm. or you know just sign up for one of our classes the classes are great you know people get so much value between the planning um understanding what they need to actually go to the next phase in terms of time and money and other resources right and yeah. um we'd love so to get the, and get the roadmap Ooh. it just totally hit my cat trying to bring my hand up for emphasis so my cat is part of the journey just so you know um if you ever talk to me on zoom my cat will probably be there with us um but the the important part is is that if you take one of our classes or really just talking with us as well um to kind of see what it is that's in front of you we dig into the the possibility that's in front of you right then we help you build a roadmap to the possibility that's mm -hmm. the pre-planning you know, and we have some great questions that we ask you to see if it's something you're ready for. Call right. us. We're here for you. That's right. All right. So, Liz, let's jump on over. Uh, we have to open up the other room so that our other participants can join in. We hope to see you over at the mind mapping uh, workshop, which is for those of you who look at this later. The mind mapping workshop is Wednesday, December 15th at 1130. So make sure you look at the time. 2021. Okay. Don't show up like tomorrow if you looked at it on the on the 16th. That's anyway, right. We'll catch y'all later. Thank you. Bye-bye.